course, I am muted when I go live. See, we try to add sophistication, and that's what happens. Um, so we tried. We added that two-minute countdown uh, this afternoon just to kind of see if that gives everybody a little bit of time to be able to uh, join the live stream and jump in the chat and participate from the beginning. Let me know if you just hate that countdown, if that just drove you absolutely insane and we'll we'll adapt and we'll overcome uh, but we're trying a different time of day a different day of the week uh, we're trying to figure out exactly when the best time is for you uh, because what we're trying to do here is create a conversation around e-commerce one of the biggest problems i believe that merchants have these days uh, is education and just being able to keep up to date with all of the v available tools, all of the different techniques, uh, e-commerce is getting more and more complicated, more and more sophisticated, uh, and it's tough to keep up. And so we want you to be able to participate in these conversations, preferably live if you can. And so uh, we're trying out Wednesday afternoon to see if this is a better time. Uh, let me know if you're watching this right now. Let me know in the chat, is this a better, is this a better day of the week? Uh, you know, Friday, and lots of times people are busy or maybe you're just tired or you're lazy. Uh, you know, it's it's a game. And I know, you know some people this may be better and some people uh, may be better on Friday afternoons. But we'll try some uh, live streams on, uh, you know, morning times and all sorts of things. Looks like um, Samuel says he can't hear me. Samuel, let me know in the chat if you can hear me now. Um, I was muted there for just a half a second but hopefully we've got all of that uh, corrected. But let me know if you can't hear me. Again, we are live streaming today on YouTube and on LinkedIn, uh, and I am checking the chat. Again, I'm gonna have to refresh LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a lot of problems for me. Um, it's sponsored by Jameson. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's not sponsored by Jameson. Today, I'm actually drinking a lav... A, Legavalin? See, I can't even pronounce it. Legavalin, um, which is going to be Scotch whiskey. I uh, fixed myself a drink here. Uh, you know, normally this kind of started as a Friday afternoon happy hour, but, you know, we, we kind of cut it back to uh, whatever day. It, we, you know, you can't, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the mornings, and you can't drink all week if you don't start on Monday. Um, so, looks like the countdown is getting positive reviews at this point. Um, well, let's let's kind of jump right into the topic. It looks like we've got most people spooled up here. Um, but really what I wanted to talk to you about today is the gap between the haves and the have-nots is growing in e-commerce. Like it or not, everyone is getting compared to the giants like Amazon, no matter the size of your business. And the pace of change in e-commerce is just hard to keep up with, uh, especially so for smaller merchants. And that's why I feel it's important for those merchants to choose tools that can help you exceed those increasing customer expectations. Um, optimizing conversions can be very expensive and time consuming. Uh, Service-based tools that can see those conversions across multiple merchants uh, and then use that information to optimize the experience have a substantial advantage. Uh, so when I wanted to talk about checkout, there was one company that really came to mind. Uh, and that was Bolt. And Bolt just finished, I want to congratulate Bolt, on finishing up a $68 million Series B funding round for a total of $90 million raised. Uh, and that's a lot of money that can be used to simplify checkout uh, and give you the advantages that a lot of these bigger companies have and help you get more from your e-commerce store, which is what we're all about here at e commerce -aholic. Now, I want to welcome to the stream uh, Jay Omar from Bolt. Uh, Jay, thanks for joining us. If you would, tell us your role at Bolt and kind of give us the elevator pitch for the service that Bolt provides. Hey, TJ, thanks so much for having me, and thanks for the congratula congratulatory note on the Series B. Uh, I'm a huge fan, by the way, I just want to mention, I'm a huge fan of your video blogs on LinkedIn and your live stream, so really excited to be here. Uh, so what I do, I run channel partnerships here at Bolt, and uh, to give you the quick elevator pitch, Bolt is on the mission to perfect checkout experience for online retailers. Essentially what we want to do is make sure nothing gets in the way when a shopper decides to buy from an online retailer. Now, continuing on the theme of Amazon since you brought them up, 
One of the reasons that Amazon continues to dominate retail is that they provide an ultra convenient, seamless buying experience, right? The same is happening for a lot of other industries. You don't want to order a taxi. You want to click on a button and you want an Uber or a Lyft to show up. Convenience is everything. So what we do is we provide the industry's fastest online checkout and it's optimized for every device coupled with the unique approach to fraud detection. So we can approve as many good orders and protect businesses from fraud. And really by converting more shoppers into customers, Bolt's become the proven choice for customer obsessed retailers like Ditto, Huff Worldwide, Hollywood. We have about 125 employees across three offices. Um, we have some top talent here from Google, Facebook, Airbnb, Pinterest on our engineering team. And uh, we raised a $90 million round. One of the no most notable things about that round that I was really proud of is a lot of e-com retailers from Revolve, Allbirds, Jet.com, et cetera, were participating in that round. So that's what we do here at Bolt. So I want to remind everybody that this is a conversation. And so we are here to field your questions, uh, to give you answers for anything you may have. The, the audience always asks the best questions. So uh, we're not going to wait to the end. It's not any of that jazz. You just go ahead and chime in with your questions, and we will do what we can to get those answered. Um, I do have some questions prepared just to kind of prime the conversation and move it uh, move it forward. But again, if you're watching, uh, we're taking questions on LinkedIn or YouTube at this point. Um, so feel free to go ahead and chime in with those questions. Uh, first question I have here is, um, you know, a lot of merchant energy has gone into minimizing cart abandonment. But and, and a lot of people think about cart abandonment when they, they think about conversion rates. But Bolt focuses more on that final step. When you finally, you've got them in the funnel, they're ready to move forward, and then right. they don't convert. So with Bolt focusing on checkout abandonment and, and to make sure our content is you know, available and understandable by a variety of merchants, regardless of their level of sophistication, let's start with a definition of checkout abandonment. Yeah, good, uh, good point and good note to start off on. So it's pretty closely related to card abandonment, um, but I believe the exact definition is when a shopper goes through their journey on your website, they add items to cart, they enter information into the first checkout step, but then at that point they decide not to complete the purchase and they click out and they abandon the, the purchase process. So that's checkout abandonment. Simple enough. Um, so what you guys have a ton of case studies. You're you're obviously replacing, you're a full end-to-end -end checkout service. And so you're replacing the default checkout with most of the, or all of the shopping carts that you integrate with. So what are the most common mistakes that you've seen in the default checkout of the current carts on the market? Yeah, that's a good question. And there are a lot that I could point to, which is why we decided to focus specifically on checkout. There's just so much that we need to address. But look, let me just start off by saying creating a great buying experience is very technically challenging, right? Uh, most retailers don't have access to the resources that Amazon has. So you can't deliver as great of an experience to your shoppers. Um, and in order to accept a payment online, what retailers today are doing is essentially integrating three or four different technologies, the checkout, the payment processing, the payment gateway, and perhaps fraud detection as well. And then you need to manage these tools with all the scarce technical resources that you have. And then you got to think about the critical updates and improvements. All of this means retailers are really struggling to deliver a simple streamlined checkout experience. So. The way that we're different to the default checkout platform is Bolt is dynamic, it's not static. Um, and so when you think about the checkout experience that comes with Magento, uh, you have that checkout experience and then it's really up to guys like you, TJ, and people in the know to be able to really try to optimize that experience as much as possible and invest a lot of time and effort into doing that. What we're doing is we're taking a different approach. We're doing all the optimization for all our retail partners. So this year alone, on bulk checkout, we're gonna be running 180 tests to optimize checkout and deploy enhancements 
to all merchants. So over time, what's going to happen is Bolt's going to continue get to get better, and we're going to continue to adapt as consumer behaviors adapt, right? Now, with the actual default checkout experience on the e-commerce platforms today, just to point out a couple of the problems that I see, and there's a lot that I could talk about over here, and I'm sure there's a few that will come to mind as well on your end. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think. Uh, but, you know, stuff like, you know, the basics, you're not using a progress bar. Pages are too slow to load. You're asking for too much information. This is a big one. There's no guest checkout option, right? You're forcing people to log in and create an account. Um, who wants to remember another username and password? And my biggest pet peeve is most of them out of the box aren't optimized for mobile. All right, again, this is uh, a live stream for you guys. We've got some questions in already. Um, James Daniel in the chat on YouTube. James, thanks for watching. Um, and his question is probably better for later on, but let's just let's just go ahead and get it out of the way up front. I'm sure if somebody, people join the stream throughout the duration, I'm sure we'll get this question again and we'll cover it toward the end just to make sure we've covered it. But his question is, how much does it cost? <laughs> I saw that. Uh, I love it. Cut to the chase. Um, so basically, we combine several different technologies, right? So the checkout, the fraud piece, and the payment processing. So like any other payment processor, we charge per transaction. Um, and uh, what that rate is going to look like, it can look like very similar rates to other payment processors. It's really going to come down to a lot of different factors like your volume, your risk profile, and all those sorts of things. So there's no standard kind of pricing matrix that I can quote out to you. It's all very custom. All right. So another question here in the chat, uh, Wilder North. Uh, not sure if, if I've said that name before. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Wilder's question is, is Bolt a single page format? Can the customer see all fields they will have to fill out or are they hidden until each step is completed? So it's actually a three-step uh, checkout experience. Um, it's not a single page format. Um, and what we've done is we've actually tested all the different formats against each other. So in the real world, we've actually looked at transactional data to see which ones are converting best. And what we figured out a three-step process is the best way to do it. It's kind of like the rule of three. Uh, when you do things in, in kind of increments of three, it's a lot more effective. And that applies to checkout. All right, so Samuel is saying, I, I want to get some clarification on the pricing. So he's saying, hey, if we're not going to tell a price, then it's got to be expensive, right? Can you give us maybe some examples of kind of where your pricing starts or, you know, is it, is it considered expensive? Um, so it's like a, what you're paying your payment process today, pretty much. Right. So um, that rate's going to vary depending on, you know, whether you're a new business that's just entering with very low volume. Um, if you look at rates, it's what about you know 2.5, 2.9, and as your volume scales, then that continues to go down. So we just take a percentage of each transaction, like another any other payment processor out there. So we're competing against other payment processors in that regard. That being said, what we try to do is really focus on the checkout on the fraud piece, and that's the value add that we bring to the table that no other payment processor can. Um, so again. Uh, it's kind of like a pricing conversation you would have with your payment processor. So it's hard for me to kind of quote uh, a specific number without knowing more specifics about your business. I know that's a cop out, but um, that's kind of what it, what it looks like. Yeah. So basically it's, you know, if you go anywhere else, you're going to have some sort of processor fees for payments. Um, so it replaces that. You, you don't have, you know, those processor fees, or at least they're, they're included in this. Um, so it's going to be comparable to what you would pay anywhere else, but you're going to get the optimized checkout basically for free at that point, right? Like it's, it's going to be similar to your payment processor, but you get this optimized checkout and some of the fraud prevention stuff that you wouldn't get from one of those other payment providers. Is that, is that a fair and accurate statement? Yeah, look, I mean, we bake all of that into the price, right? So um, from a fraud perspective, we're really looking at your risk profile. 
um, without getting into too much detail to, on what we do on the fraud side. So if you're a low risk business, you'll have lower rates. If you're a high risk business, that means we're going to do more effort in terms of protecting your business on the fraud side. So we bake that into the price. Okay. Uh, again, keep those questions coming. Uh, looks like we've got all of the ones that are active in the chat currently. Um, so, and I always talk about um, how conversion rates are really an effect of how well you lower friction and reduce risk for the merchant. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how Bolt goes about that uh, in their checkout process? Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, lowering friction, really what we're trying to do is just suck out all the friction that we could find in the in the kind of like the standard checkout experience. And the best way to kind of really um, quantify that is it takes about 35 seconds to complete bulk checkout. Anywhere else on the web, if you look at all the other e-com platforms, it's typically over a minute. And we've essentially done this by removing all friction points. So there's no redirects. We have fewer fields to fill in. I think there's 12 fewer fields. Um, things like billing address, we just got rid of it altogether. So you never have to fill that in. Um, we've optimized for page load. We've optimized a lot of things, even things that, you know, you never really think would have an impact on conversion, like error messages, right? When you type things incorrectly or miss a field, we've even optimized things like error messages. So we really have spent a lot of time fine tuning the process by actually deploying real world AB tests to figure out what the optimal checkout experience looks like. Um, so, you know, coming to, to give you a couple of examples and compare it to the default checkout experience, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, sometimes default checkout experiences don't use a progress bar. We got the three step process, as I mentioned, shipping, delivery and payments. Um, there's no guest checkout option or people, you know, typically try to push people toward a login wall on the default checkouts that you see on Magento, for example. We've essentially moved account creation post sale. Right. So we maximize conversion of the guest checkout. And then once you've already converted the customer, you can pretty much now convert that into an account. Oh, and by the way, with Bolt accounts, you don't actually require a username or password. We've essentially created an Amazon like one click buy for returning customers. There's no login. It just uses your mobile number in order to automatically recognize you and two factor authentication. So. That's just a couple of examples of optimizations that we've made versus the default checkout. Now on the risk side, uh, what we're doing over there to optimize is we're using machine learning to reduce risk. Uh, and we use over 200 variables. Now what's unique about Bolt versus say a Riskified or a Signified is in our approach, because we've combined the checkout experience with fraud and payments, we have access to a lot more data. And specifically we have access to behavioral data at checkout. So we've noticed that fraudsters, when they check out, have very specific behaviors to real customers. So for example, you notice that fraudsters, when they check out, you'll notice their mouse move across screen. They'll go into another application. They'll copy the a credit card number from some Excel file, and they'll come back to check out and paste it in. Typically, people just type their credit card. Uh, we've also noticed things like they'll make a lot of spelling mistakes where there shouldn't be spelling mistakes and first names and, and street names and those sorts of things. We've also noticed that uh, a lot of the work, the data entry work is farmed out to non-English speaking countries where people are essentially reading off one screen, typing to another. So they type really slowly. So we look at all these behavioral variables and these data points, all of that gets fed into our machine learning algorithm. And in real time, we create a behavioral profile to figure out, hey, is this a real customer or is this a fraudster? All right, we've got a couple of other questions or a few other questions here. Again, keep those questions coming. Wilder has two questions here. I'm going to break this into two and allow you to handle it separately. One of these really goes um, into some, some stuff I wanted to dive into as well. But the first part of Wilder's question here is, is saved billing information a feature in Bolt? So... Uh... We do save all your credit card information and we tokenize that. Um, and that's all securely saved and pro processed through Bands of Broadway, which is our uh, payment processing partner. Um, 
In terms of billing information, in terms of your actual billing address, we just do not require it. But the only reason that e-commerce checkout experiences have billing address most of the time is really just to secure the transaction. We want to know that this is in fact their credit card, so we ask for it. Well, here at Bolt, because we're so sophisticated in terms of how we detect fraud, and we're looking at 200 signals in just, instead of one, we just got rid of those fields. And now we just allow consumers to just process through checkout a lot quicker than they would typically if they need to fill in billing. That's a very interesting point um, in, in the fact that you just, there's not really, other than the actual credit card, there's not any information to save, really, right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, so if I check out on, you know, my site, you, I go to, you know, ecommerceaholicmerch.com, which doesn't exist. But if I, if I go buy merch and I check out through Bolt and then I come back tomorrow to buy some stuff, is my payment information already saved in there, everything ready to go um, so I can just click that button and, and process the checkout even quicker this time? Exactly. That's that's the idea. So as a consumer, you have the option to do that. Obviously, we always give consumers the option to uh, choose to do it. And most consumers are actually doing it because they want a simpler process. Now, what happens is we'll tokenize that information. Um, and the next time that consumer comes back to the same site or any site that uses Bolt, uh, once they type in their mobile number, we'll automatically recognize them. We'll autofill all their info. We send a code to the phone. They enter that code in checkout, and that's it. They're done. All right. If uh, if that didn't answer that portion of your question there, Wilder, let me know, and we will try to make sure we get you an answer on that one. Um, and I want to kind of go through uh, the second half of her question here, which is, do you only process credit cards, or do you integrate with Amazon Pay, PayPal, um, and I, I know a little bit of information about this, so I'm going to reframe that question a little bit in that if I want to offer PayPal or Amazon Pay on my website, how do I go about doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. So you can definitely offer all of those options alongside Bolt. Really what we're trying to solve for is a better way to accept credit card payments. And you should really, as a merchant, uh, be thinking about you know, the top three payment methods that are really used in your country and give your consumers options, right? And what they want to offer. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can go about doing it. Uh, the way that I prefer is to have all those options on the cart page, right? So have the Bolt option there, which is for all your credit card transaction, the Visa, MasterCard, Amex, et cetera. Have your PayPal option there if people want to check out using PayPal. Um, or you could add in Amazon Pay or a firm or whatever have you, right? Whatever your alternative payment method is. Um, in addition to that, what we're trying to do here at Bolt is build a one-stop shop for checkout. And some consumers, uh, some of our merchants have actually requested that in our checkout, in our modal overlay, we include some of those payment options. So today we have Apple Pay available in Bolt. So when you are transacting on a Apple Pay enabled device, that option will automatically appear in the Bolt uh, modal. And uh, also PayPal is integrated with Bolt. Um, we haven't rolled that out yet. We're actually going to be rolling that out pretty soon. Um, so you will have those to begin with. Now, why do we start with those two? We started with those two because that's what our merchants have requested. Those are by far the most used options online when trying to transact um, outside of credit card, that is. All right, we have a question from Monica Grant over on uh, LinkedIn. Monica, thanks for watching the live streams. Um, and I can't pull in the LinkedIn uh, questions to show on the bottom, so I'll just read this one from my LinkedIn screen I've got over here. Um, what's the most surprising thing you've learned about the checkout process in your experience in e-com? I'm gonna let you answer first and then I'll give mine. The most surprising thing about the checkout process um, that I've learned in e-com, the most surprising thing actually is uh, the lack of focus that people really have on mobile. Uh, to me has been pretty surprising. Um, you think in this day and age, with you know all of us having a mobile phone in our pockets, every e-com retailer is thinking mobile first. Um, and uh, that's certainly not the case. And when you look at the data, you could see, you know, mobile traffic going up, 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 up. 
but the conversion rate on mobile is actually not that great. It's not keeping up. Mobile sales aren't going up, up, up. Mobile sales are actually just staying the same. So that just means lower conversion. Um, so that's been the most surprising thing for me, like that, you know, there are not more businesses out there trying to solve for that. Yet I would say for me, it's a couple of things. One, how hard a loyal customer will actually try to get past all of your stupid things you've added into the checkout to buy from you. Like I, there are customers that go to great lengths to try to buy from some of these retailers. Uh, it's amazing. Everybody's talking about how you, you know, you lose conversions and you lose customers and you know, if it's not just perfect. Yeah. But there's a certain segment of your customer base that, you know, has just an incredible loyalty if you've been in business for a while and you treat your customers right. And then on the flip side of that is how infrequently people actually reevaluate their checkout options and even look at it. Like once the site's live for most merchants, that's just the end of it. It's done. That's how checkout works. Uh, and we don't look at it again until we're redesigning our website. Um, so that, that's yeah, probably but, the two most surprising things for me. Yeah, that's spot on. You know, I think a lot of people focus on the first 90 yards, right? Everything to get people up to check out and they assume at that point, people are just going to transact. But when you look at the data, it's really, really clear, you know, seven out of 10 people, when they hit that point, that's when they actually abandon the process. So really that's what you really need to focus as a retailer as well. But a lot of people aren't doing that because it's, I guess, not sexy. Um, the other thing that I think that's been interesting on the checkout side and it's kind of related to fraud. And I wasn't really aware of this issue until I started at Bolt. And uh, is uh, the issue of false positives where, you know, uh, retailers are deploying systems to essentially fight fraud. Um, and they're partnering with their financial institutions and some third party fraud providers to do that. Um, but in the process of deploying these systems and trying to stop fraud from happening on their website, they're also stopping legitimate customers from transacting. And that's a false positive. A real customer going to a website and they're falsely declined and the transaction is not able to be completed. This actually happened to my dad just recently. Um, I, um, I recently had a, had a baby boy and my dad was in town. Uh, he lives in New Zealand and uh, he wanted to buy me a gift. I had registered a bye-bye baby. And uh, he went and purchased a stroller. Um, it was $900 stroller from Bye Bye Baby. And he went and purchased it. And Bye Bye Baby looked at that transaction. Their fraud system looked at it. And uh, basically, uh, his credit card is uh, registered in New Zealand, New Zealand billing address. Uh, he's at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco. And he's shipping to another address in San Francisco. And they look at all that data and they go, this looks fraudulent. This looks risky. I don't want to take on this transaction. They declined that transaction at checkout after he entered all his information in. It's a terrible experience, right? And uh, what ended up happening is he had an Amazon account. He jumps onto Amazon. He ends up buying the same stroller. Transaction goes through. It gets delivered to my house and three days later. So that's a $900 sale that Bye Bye Baby lost. So that to me has been a really eye-opening. I didn't realize that false positives were, were so pervasive in the industry. 1.7% of all incoming orders are falsely declined. And that's the other thing we're trying to solve for here at Bolt. How can our risk engine really approve more good orders for our, for our merchants? All right, so keep those questions coming. We're getting to them in the order in which they were asked. Uh, the next question we have here is from Samuel Barr. Again, Samuel, thanks for watching the live streams and thank you for your question. Um, his question is, so what's your target business size? Uh, seems you're only working with businesses a million and up in annual credit card sales. Um, so what, what size merchants are, is your ideal merchant and kind of, you know, is there a threshold for who would even be right for this kind of service? Samuel's right. Uh, so that is the minimum. Um, so you're doing a million in credit card processing volume. Um, and that's primarily because we have a really high touch approach here at Bolt. We actually take care of the integration um, end to end. Uh, so you don't have to do it. Um, and we also have an account management team that's dedicated to you. Um, and because it's so high touch, uh, right now we're just not able to onboard merchants less than a million. Um, that'll change over time as our support structure goes from uh, one to one to one to many. Um, what's our sweet spot? 
our sweet spot really if you if you look at the data are merchants that are doing anywhere from uh, five to 100 million um, that's kind of our sweet spot it's pretty wide ranging and that's really because the problems that we're trying to solve um, there are a lot of different retailers that are, are dealing with that issue so um, it's retailers selling physical goods um, that are doing anywhere from five to 100 million that's where we're seeing uh, bolt add the most value and another question here, which is similar uh, from Emma. Emma, thanks for watching. Appreciate your question. Um, it, you know, is it is it really just the transactional volume or, or excuse me, the, the dollar amount? Or is there kind of a transactional volume threshold as well? Um, that, like, I mean, if they made one sale for a million dollars, you know, is, is that right for, for you? Or is it uh, really a, a certain volume size? It's it's just the uh, it's just the credit card process and volume annually. So if you got a really high AOV and you're doing a uh, low volume in terms of transactions, that's not an issue. All right. So keep those questions coming. Uh, I think we have all of them answered at this point. Um, <laughs> Wilder comments in the chat that he'll check back when he's made his millions. Um, it, you know, the, the problem is, Wilder, is that, you know, a lot of these things take a, a big investment. That's, you know, that's kind of the, the problem with with some of these. And so, you know, until you get to a certain volume, then it's difficult to service those clients. Um, and so, you know, I, we definitely need to kind of talk about some of the things. And, and we're going to do this on this channel. I've got an initiative we're going to try to do starting either late this year or early next year to really help. Um, smaller merchants that are just getting started or are just starting to see some significant volume take their e-com to the next level. So stay in, you know, stay subscribed. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, I'd love to talk to you more about kind of what you're seeing and some of the things we could do to actually help you um, in your business. So I'm going to get back to my questions uh, until I see some more from uh, the chat. Um, so, so, you know, it, what's the main benefit of a Bolt? I want to make sure, and we've touched on some of this already, but I want to make sure in this context we have this answer. Um, what's the benefit of using a service like Bolt versus just going and optimizing your own checkout? The main benefit, uh, to be quite blunt and, blunt and frank, is more sales, more transactions. Um, you know, we're just trying to make sure nothing ways to buy uh, from your website um, and we do this by pro things a hyper optimized checkout that's driving higher completion rates it also comes with a one-click buy solution for returning customers and then building in a machine learning fraud uh, risk engine that's really based on approving more good orders right so coming back to the false positive issue that I outlined now um, you know merchants really can't in create a similar sort of experience. Uh, I kind of said this at the top of my presentation, uh, the top of the conversation here, right? So it's really technically challenging. It's very expensive. It requires a lot of resources. We just raised 68 million uh, to be able to invest in our checkout solution. And it really takes that sort of investment, right? To be able to create a great experience. And on the surface, it looks simple. If you look at Amazon's checkout, it looks pretty simple. And that's the idea. Try to make it really, really simple. But in order to do that, there's great complexity that goes on in the back end. So can you give us some examples of conversion rate increases uh, in checkout that you've seen when someone has switched from the default checkout in their cart to Bolt? Yeah, I mean, we have a ton of case studies available on our website. If you go to bolt.com slash case studies, uh, you can read through a lot of them just to talk in generalizations first, and then I can uh, uh, bring up some specific examples. Um, if you compare our checkout conversion rates versus the industry, it doesn't matter what device you're on, we're outperforming the industry. So mobile, for example, um, everyone else, the industry average checkout completion rate is 19%. At Bolt, it's 33.4. Um, if you look at uh, desktop, the average is 29% checkout completion on the industry. At Bolt, it's 41.1, right? So that's the average. Now, certain retailers are seeing higher, certainly retailers are seeing lower. So 
I'll dive into a specific example here. Um, I mentioned this company earlier, Ditta Eyewear. Um, TJ, are you familiar with Ditta? Uh, I can't say that it sounds familiar. I think uh, we get, we got to get you a pair. Are you a big MMA fan by any chance? MMA? No, not really. I, I'm, I'm pretty much a big e-commerce fan. fan. That's really all I do is e-commerce. Um, but I am a big sunglass fan. Like I, I, I have this thing where I, I am drawn to sunglasses and hats for some reason. I, like I'm not a, a lot of people are shoe guys. Not me. Could care less. I've got I own one pair of shoes. That's it. Um, but sunglasses and hats sunglasses tend to do it for me. Got it. Well, definitely check out Ditta. So for those MMA fans out there, uh, if there are any Conor McGregor fans out there, he wears sunglasses to all his press conferences. The sunglasses he's wearing, those are Ditta. Um, also, any fans of the uh, TV show Ballers with The Rock, uh, if you see The Rock wearing sunglasses on that TV show, that's Ditta Eyewear right there. So uh, Ditta, before they came over to Bolt, was they were using Magento's default checkout, and they spent a lot of money trying to optimize it. And uh, they were using Riskify for fraud. Um, and I really like this case study because what we did is we actually did a split test uh, to compare Magento and Riskify versus Bolt. And what we found out is we absolutely destroyed Magento when we looked at the checkout completion uh, rate. So checkout abandonment dropped by 46% versus Magento. That's incredible. Site-wide, the conversion rate improved by 72% after they implemented Bolt checkout. And with the head-to-head -head comparison with Riskified, really what we were solving for, and this is a, a conversion rate is, uh, conversion issue, is false positives. So their order approval rate improved by 30%. So they were rejecting a lot of customers falsely that we were able to now actually enable and uh, help complete their transactions. Now, with numbers like that, so I, got, I got my sunglasses on, I'm good to go. With numbers like that, are we talking about, like, were they doing something stupid or were they just using the default checkout? Like, it, it just, with that kind of improvement, you know, because the, the problem is, is Magento is the most flexible e-commerce platform in the world. You could do whatever the hell you want to do on it. And so, you know, is that a standard checkout or had they made some mistakes along the way? Look, you're totally right, right? So some, some retailers are more clued in than others. Right. And uh, some retailers have uh, taken a sophisticated approach to improving their checkout, spent a lot of money, uh, you know, A-B testing and working with companies such as yourself or, or, you know, using tools like Optimizely, et cetera, and being really diligent to try to improve the checkout experience. But here's the math, right? Quite simply, if your checkout experience, if your checkout completion rate on mobile is, say, 20 percent, and you come over to Bolt, and we now have a checkout completion rate of 30%, 30 over 20, you know, that's a 33% that's a improvement right there, right? So, uh, sorry, that's a 50% improvement right there. So that's how we get to these big numbers. And, you know, it's, it's really a result of the investment that we're making in the checkout process and being very diligent about doing all these A-B tests to continually see how we can improve the experience on all device types. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of retailers, like you said earlier, you know, you're, they're spending a lot of time focusing on so much else that's happening in their world, right? The checkout is the 10 yard line, right? And so everybody's focusing on everything else. Like how do I get on, you know, the rest of the 90%, how do I get all my consumers to that 10 yard line? And then they're just checking checkout for granted. So, yeah, I mean, these case study results, uh, there's there's no voodoo magic. It's it's just the math. If you're working with a 20%, you know, checkout completion rate today and we take it up to 30, that's a 50% improvement. All right, we don't have any questions in the chat currently, but we do have some props. Tom is watching. Tom, so thank, thanks for your uh, comment. Thanks for supporting the live stream and continuing to watch regularly tom's comment is we have magento clients using bolt they're happy and have increased revenue um so um tom also asks here what am i drinking we've got uh legavalin uh 16 year um scotch whiskey which i got from web scale when we did our live stream there uh, a couple of weeks ago it's 
It's pretty good stuff. I, I'm i not as big a fan of scotch as I am bourbon. I don't know what it is. It's that, that all scotch has kind of that similar flavor pattern. I prefer the bourbon uh, flavor patterns myself, but as far as scotches go, this is actually a really good one. I am enjoying uh, this bottle much more so than whatever that crap was I have been drinking on the live streams. <laughs> Uh, we've also and, uh, got I'm drinking over here. I guess what what do you bottle. have there? What, what what bottle are you drinking? I'm a, I'm, a bourbon, I'm a bourbon guy myself too, TJ. I've got some uh, bullet bourbon here. Bullets, good stuff. Are you drinking the rye, or do you know? Uh, it's the rye, yeah. Yeah, they've they've got a really good rye. Um, Samuel in the chat here also mentions that he used uh, Bolt on a big commerce site recently when he was checking stuff out, uh, and so from a customer point of view. Uh, it was very slick. Um, and that's most of my experience with it as well is, is from a customer perspective. And, man, it, it definitely makes a huge difference. Uh, I am checking to make sure there are no um, questions here before we continue on. Again, if you have questions, go ahead and post those. Um, you guys always ask much, much better questions than I do. Uh, if you happen to be new around here and you enjoy these live streams, you know, we're trying to bring something to you every single week. Um, we put out a lot of video content. I've been traveling a lot, so we've been a little slack on the, on the, slack on the video. I've uh, been doing some vlog-style stuff, just kind of testing those types of videos out. I've still got a couple of those coming from the travels. Um, they're not my favorite. I don't love watching the vlog style stuff myself. So we're, we're going to get back to um, the more polished and produced four and five minute videos that we were doing before. But if you like this type of content, if you want to engage in these types of conversations, uh, if you have particular questions that you want to, you know, you want to have answered or particular services you want to know more about, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, or if you're on LinkedIn, then giving me a follow uh, and we'll, we're going live each and every week. We're experimenting with different times and days at this point. Uh, we've got a very interesting live stream. I believe it's, I believe it's next week, actually. Let me, I got to verify this. I got to verify that this live stream is next week because um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, it looks like it's on 8-8. So um, on next Thursday... We are going to go live with an analytics de developer from Lululemon who's going to talk to us about how e-commerce brands use analytics to drive their decision making and increase their business. And then Friday, after that live stream, we're going to go live with Glue.io to talk about how you can do that as a merchant with more affordable tooling. Because somebody like Lululemon's got uh, unlimited budget, so they can they can spend and spend and spend. Uh, but we're going to show you the the very next day on on how to do that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Samuel Samuel mentions in the chat here that he will keep an eye open for when we can support the the little guys, the smaller guys as well. We've got some ideas there, Samuel. Um, we're going to start implementing those a little later. You know, unfortunately, it's a lot easier to talk about all these tools and all of these ways of spending money, but the smaller guy really needs to take that money and he needs to spend it more wisely, right? I mean, these tools help, but you, you don't have a lot. And so you've got to make sure you maximize your return uh, and, and we're going to work on some things um, to help you do that without spending money on tooling that, that may or may not be right for you. Um, all right, so we're going to continue our conversation here. Um, I've got a few questions left uh, before we call this an afternoon. It feels like Friday to me because we normally do these live streams on Friday. Um, all right, I wanted to feels talk like about bourbon here so yeah um, you I can't see. you've been drinking now you can't go back to work and you're on the west coast it's like middle of the day you've got to take off now it's like it's like company policy yeah. right it's a nice sunny day over here actually so exactly what's the what's the weather like over there right now it's uh i haven't been out today but i'm just looking out the window over here and it looks like it's pretty uh warm and toasty so uh might need to go continue this you know, somewhere, uh, somewhere out there. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, what I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, you guys, you had mentioned you handle the integration and you integrate with a certain platform. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk first about what platforms do you officially support currently? 
So all the major platforms, they're all listed on our site and we're continuing to add more and more, but, um, you know, Magento, Magento One, Big Commerce, uh, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, uh, NetSuite, um, you know, WooCommerce. Um, and then we also have a custom REST API. So if you have a custom build or if you have, uh, you know, a cart that's built on, you know, another platform that we don't have an extension or plugin built for, you can integrate both with those, uh, those uh, sites as well. All right, that was my next question is, if I'm doing a progressive web app, right? That's that's kind of a hot topic, especially uh, in in Magento a, at this point. Um, if I'm building a PWA and I want to use Bolt for the checkout, um, how how does that work? Like, how does do you, do you? And I know you're you're not the tech guy you're necessarily, tech and we guy. can get more uh, technical answers later. But do you have maybe some some information about how we would go about pulling that off? Yeah, so uh, let me start by saying, yeah, to your point, I'm, I'm not a tech guy. So, but we do have a well-documented REST API, um, and uh, we're essentially, you know, enabling our checkout experience in all sorts of applications. Uh, we actually have a partnership coming up with a company that's going to allow us to be able to deploy Bolt in mobile applications, right? So, the iOS, Androids um, devices. So. Um, We've made our, our platform as extensible as possible for people to be able to integrate with any sort of e-commerce application that they want to build. Um, so uh, if there is a specific question, TJ, that you, you have, happy to answer it. But, you know, that's, uh, that's our general approach to being able to work with uh, PWA and, you know, any sort of application. And I asked that question because I may have a PWA project that we want to leverage Bolt for. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little more offline um, as to how that, you know, that would happen. Um, so we're, we're going to hang out. We've been going now for almost 50 minutes. Um, we're going to try to hang out for another, you know, five or 10 minutes uh, if the questions keep coming. But if the questions drive, then we're going to go enjoy our afternoon. It's a, a little, little overcast day here in Alabama, but it's still good weather out there and I'll, I get a lot of things done this afternoon. Um, but while we're here, if you have some questions about checkout, about e-commerce in general, uh, or you want to know more about Bolt in particular, please ask them uh, in the chat either on YouTube or LinkedIn here. And I'm going to refresh LinkedIn's page just to make sure I haven't missed any comments. It looks like I've got all of those. Um, so, and, and we, we had talked about a little bit um, in several of those other questions about fraud prevention. Um, but I, again, I wanted to make sure we touched on that point in and of itself. Uh, a lot of merchants nowadays, especially smaller merchants, they're not really doing any fraud prevention. You know, their fraud prevention is they look at the order and they say, oh my God, this looks fishy. I'm not going to ship this, or I'm going to call the person or whatever they end up doing. And, you know, even slightly more sophisticated merchants are just taking those losses and when they're out there negotiating credit card rates, unless fraud is a significant problem for them, then they're they're not really even looking at that. So tell me, you know, that, that's that's an interesting aspect of Bolt is that it, you know, it packages in the checkout, it packages in the fraud prevention. Um, so could you talk a little bit more about, you know, the fraud prevention, kind of how that works, what that does, and why that's important for merchants? Absolutely. Let's start with why it's important, right? And uh, you know, I love data, and uh, I think this data really, this uh, data point really encapsulates why it's important. So, Experience put, put a research paper out, and it said that e commerce fraud in the United States is growing twice as quick as e commerce sales. So, e commerce sales was growing at about 16%, but e commerce fraud is growing at about 30%, right? So, more and more fraudsters are, are looking for retailers that aren't deploying systems in order to prevent bad actors from tapping in and uh, and uh, taking advantage. So um, what are we doing to solve for it? So right off the bat, you know, what Bolt's providing to all merchants is a zero fraud guarantee. So we provide chargeback protection. Um, and that really solves for the fraudulent chargeback issue that you're dealing with. Now, the problem with fraud, and this is where it gets really complex, is uh, what's happening today is merchants and their financial institutions are deploying all these systems to prevent fraud, 
but that's creating a much bigger problem, which is false positives. And that's essentially when legitimate transactions, as I mentioned this uh, about a half hour ago, legitimate transactions, legitimate customers are getting falsely declined, right? So either it's because you have a manual review process and you're declining them through that, as was the case with um, my, my dad and Bye Bye Baby, or um, it's just the financial institution uh, has some uh, rules-based fraud uh, prevention that's built into um, their payment system. So whatever the case may be, a lot of businesses are getting falsely declined. And this is the hidden problem. So a lot of businesses, you know, even if they're looking at their data and they're going, yeah, you know what, I don't have a lot of fraudulent chargebacks. You actually probably have a lot of false positives, right? So you have a lot of customers that you're falsely declining. Now, in order to, that's what we're really trying to solve for here at Bolt. And really the way we're doing that is fundamentally having a different approach to looking at fraud. Really the way we look at it is we're trying to look and see how many good orders we can approve rather than how many fraudsters we can prevent transacting from you on your website. So in order to, to, to deal with that, there's two components. Number one, there's a machine learning layer right? And I talked about this, we're using 200 variables to detect for fraud in real time. But in addition to that, there are certain transactions that are going to be on the fence, right? It's called machine learning for a reason. The machines continue to learn. But when those transactions that don't have a high confidence score are on the fence, we actually have an in-house review team. Uh, these are trained professionals, uh, in-house fraud review team, and they'll review those transactions for our retail partners. Um, and there's a one hour SLA. And at the end of that, they'll then come and make a decision and let you know, is this indeed a fraudulent transaction or not? And the reason that we have that is a lot of other fraud solutions that don't have that human layer, those transactions that are on the fence are, are just automatically declined. And what ends up happening is you end up having, having a lot of false positives, right? Because you're also declining good customers through that process. We never want to do that. So we always want to have this second layer of approval where we have um, our team review those transactions just to make sure that it is in fact fraudulent. And if it's not, we're going to let that transaction through. All right. So if you would, if you happen to be watching this, give us a thumbs up. Help us spread the word of what we're doing here at e-commerce Aholic. Um, that's the social media. The only way we can spread this word is either for paid ads and I'm too broke for that crap or for you guys to actually interact with the videos and give us some thumbs up and comment. So I appreciate all of the comments. I appreciate everybody who watched and tuned in. Uh, Jay, if you would uh, fill everybody in on how they can get in touch with you or how they can find out more about Bolt. Yeah, definitely. Just, it's really simple. Just go to Bolt.com, B-O-L-T.com. Um, and, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, just go to the contact page, request a demo. And, uh, we have a special promotion for, uh, for everybody that's listening out there. So if you say that Jamerson sent you, if you say TJ Gamble, Jamerson sent you, uh, there'll be no bulk fee for the first hundred thousand in, in uh, transaction volume. All right. So you get to save some money while increasing your conversion rates. Again, thank everybody for watching. We've got two live streams lined up for next week. I'm very excited about those, as I was very excited about this one. Uh, but this is the first time we've done that kind of cover a topic and then follow it up um, with something a little more practical. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, be sure to set your calendar, subscribe, follow me so you'll know about those live streams as they happen. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Thanks, CJ.